good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on behalf of MK Global, uh, I am pleased to uh, uh, welcome you to the Q1 FY24 post earnings conference call of Petronet LNG Limited. Uh, the company uh, will, be, will be represented by the senior management led by uh, Mr. Vinod Kumar Mishra, Director of Finance, Mr. Rakesh Chawla, GGM and President of Finance and Accounts, Mr. Gyanendra Kumar Sharma, uh, CGM and VP Marketing, Mr. Vivek Mittal, CGM and VP Marketing, and Mr. Devabrat Satpati, General Manager of Finance and Accounts. So uh, today's session would be in the, a brief on the results and the uh, performance of the company, followed by the question and answer round. So without any further delay, now I request uh, Mr. Vinod Mishra for the opening opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Sabri. Thank you very much. Uh, I welcome all of you. Very good evening to all of you. So uh, if you look at the financial result of Q1 2024, it's uh, during this quarter ended on this 30th June 2023. The Hayes terminal has processed 217 TBTUs as compared to 172 TBTU in the previous quarter and 196 TBTU in the corresponding quarter. Uh, there is a, a growth of around 26% uh, as compared to previous quarter and 11% as compared to corresponding quarter. If you look at the overall utilization of uh, the Hayes terminal, it is at the level of 96% as compared to 76% in the previous quarter and 87% in the corresponding quarter. Overall throughput uh, in both the terminals, the Hage and Kochi, is to the extent of 230 TBTU as compared to 185 TBTU in the previous quarter and 208 TBTU in the corresponding quarter. So this is the total utilization level and overall utilization has uh, increased from by 24% and 11% as compared to previous quarter and corresponding quarter. And if you go to the financial results, the PBT has been uh, 1,062 crores as compared to uh, 880 crores, 18 crore in the previous quarter and 937 crore in the corresponding quarter. There is a growth of around 30%, 13% respectively as compared to previous quarter and corresponding quarter. And the uh, PAT has been to the extent of 790 crore as compared to 614 crore in the previous quarter and uh, total uh, 701 crore in the corresponding quarter. Here also growth is around 29% and 13% as compared to previous quarter and corresponding quarter. And if you look at the PAT and PVT, this is the highest ever PAT and PVT in the first quarter of any previous financial year as compared to those quarters. So uh, this is how the company has fared. And now if you look at the total uh, throughput uh, uh, which has we, we have been able to uh, in achieve is uh, due to better capacity utilization and uh, efficiency in operation. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Probal Sen from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Good evening, sir. Uh, two questions from my side. Uh, one was uh, that uh, Gail, in, in, in its own analyst briefing a couple of hours ago, mentioned that the bubble breakwater facility is making progress. And once it is actually completed in the next financial year, they would look to probably divert about 12 to 14 cargoes that they now route through the the H terminal. Uh, so, which translates to, I guess, somewhere around 1 million tons or so. Do you realistically see this as a threat to our utilization in FI25 if Yale actually manages to follow through on uh, this guidance? That was my first question. 
uh, you are referring to this uh, press conference or whatever in which you meet you must have held with Kiel. Right. Yeah. So yeah. One, uh, actually, this I cannot comment if they have something in their mind and they have stated to you. The only mm-hmm. thing I can say that uh, whatever capacity is booked to the extent mm-hmm. of 2.5 MMPPA and to the extent of uh, uh, long-term contract they have with us to the extent of right. uh, share of around 4.5 MMPPA out of 7.5 MMPPA in RAS gas. So that will continue. So I think um, there should not be too much of impact because Gail is, is already having more uh, cargoes in their hand. They can bring more cargoes to India. So as far as our commitment is concerned, it will remain so. And perhaps... Uh, uh, maybe that uh, they are taking right now some cargo to Angira. So they may switch over to Dabo. Because here the commitment is firm. We cannot say that uh, they will take cargo from here to Dabo. Because they have already committed to the extent of 2.5 MMTPA. So that will continue. So we don't foresee any threat to us. Maybe whatever cargoes they are uh, taking to Hazira or any other terminal, they may mm-hmm. divert them to uh, Dabo. Sir, just to be clear, this two and a half MTP you are mentioning is the long-term cargoes that Gail has uh, on back-to-back with you, correct? Yeah, long, yeah. And what about the regas uh, contract, sir? How much do they have tied up in the regas? Uh, I am telling about this uh, long-term contract is four and a half right. MTP. Out of four, four years, and okay. two and a half MT, MMTPA regas contract with us. So almost oh. uh, you can say that uh, 24 cargoes, uh, 36, mm-hmm. uh, 40 cargoes, uh, they have to bring to our terminal in a year. And to the 40 uh, cargoes in total, long term as well as uh, regas. Equivalent to two and a half MMTPA. Understood. Understood. Right. Uh, uh, thank you for that, sir. The second question, if I may, was with respect to the uh, petrochemical expansion that we have. Any further updates you can share in terms of how, where the project is right now, whether we have moved in terms of any milestones, uh, finalizing uh, any any licensor and things like that? Can you share any updates on that project? Right now, it has not gone to the board for approval. So now the consultant is already preparing the... Uh, DFR and other things and so as and when it will come to the board then only we will initiate the proceedings but right now you are right that we are doing some uh, pre-project activities so that is there and uh, as and when this licensure selection is finalized we will put up to the board along with uh, DFR so that part is is, um, maybe completed in next uh, four, five months, six months maximum. So realistically speaking, sir, we can think about going to the board sometime by uh, the end of this financial year or maybe in the fourth quarter. Is that a fair way to look uh, at it? I cannot predict it. It will be too early to say anything. But maybe maybe in three months also it may happen, two, three months or maybe four months. I'm not sure about it, but it will go definitely because uh, EIL is finalizing the license selection. And mm-hmm. uh, they give the recommendation, then we will start... Uh, the process for uh, recommendation to the board to our PSC committee. So that is there, but uh, exact timeline I cannot predict right now. But I have told you the maximum time limit is four to six months, five to six months. Maximum. Understood. Understood, sir. Understood. Thank you, sir. I'll come back if I have any questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kirtan Mehta from BOB Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity. Uh, sir, sorry to interrupt, but the, uh, you are not audible, sir. The volume is very low. If you could please speak closer to the mic. Is this better? Uh, it's a little better, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to understand the progress on the take or pay revenue that we have charged to the customer. I believe we were pursuing the FY22 take or pay revenues for the realization. So, is there any progress where the clients have recognized and made any payment or commitments? See, we are trying our level best. We are still making efforts to realize the uh, payments and uh, we are following up with them and uh, 
some of the customers have even uh, directed and provide directed TDS on that. So we are hopeful that as per contract, it is payable. So we are pursuing it. As such, there is no uh, other proposal in hand. So as per contract, we are following it up and rigorously pursuing it so that uh, we can get the realization of entire use of HRV. So in terms of the revenue, you mentioned that some of the customers have deducted TDS. Would you be able to give a proportion on which the TDS has been deducted? It, uh, I cannot give the names here right now. But, uh, Only the proportion or is it a percentage of the total that we have charged without revealing the names? Percentage-wise, I cannot uh, discuss. But I am telling you that this is a good sign that somebody has recognized that there is a liability in their books. So it's a good thing for us that uh, they are in process of recognizing the liability and that's why they have detected the TDS. Right. So the second question, I just wanted to clarify my understanding of your previous answer to Proval. <coughs> so what we are saying is that the Gale has a 2.5 million ton contract with us which includes both the service as well as the long-term values, and this translates to around 40 cargoes that Gale is committed. No, no. I'm just interrupting you. There are two contracts. One is long-term contract uh, against the large gas volumes, which is to the extent of 60% of 7.5 mm TPA that works out to 4.5 mm TPA. So that is a part, which means sale of RLNG we are doing back-to-back -to, -back to the extent of 4.5 mm TPA which translates equivalent to almost uh, uh, 72 cargoes. So that is apart from this 2.5 MFTP, which is equivalent to 40 cargoes. Total 112 cargoes, if you look at from these two contracts. And this does not include the, uh, this Exxon mobile volume, which is also to the extent of 30% of 1.425 MFTP. So I'm just telling you, a total uh, totality, how much is the commitment of Gale? So these are all firm commitment. Understood, sir. Thank you. Thanks for this clarification. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Malik Patel from Equiris Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, a couple of questions. First is that uh, on uh, this project expansion, on the H, can you just give the updates, uh, the status of the GT, studio tanks, where are we right now? And there have been some talks in the market that uh, you are not getting the support from the government of Gujarat, uh, to particularly from the Gujarat Maritime Board, uh, in your proposed expansion, because you require to get that approval, and the government of Gujarat is not giving because there has been a due from, from GSPC against this uh, take or pay contract. Can you just please clear uh, any, any update on the same? See, uh, all these things uh, you are just mentioning, I am not aware of those. But uh, okay. what I can say is that uh, progress is well as far as our capex is concerned. We are going ahead well and uh, this uh, tank's construction is almost more than 50% complete. Maybe by uh, end of this 24, we shall be completing both the tanks. So I think that's not an issue, capex wise. And the uh, second part is uh, the hedge expansion part. For that also, we are just uh, uh, going to award the contract so that uh, we can just finalize all the details. And it is going on. In fact, some work we have already started. And okay. uh, of course, uh, these will be awarded. More uh, packages will be awarded. In fact, uh, more consultant AIL is there, who is an EPCM contractor. So he's doing all the jobs. So I think there is no hurdle in that, and it will come in time. So that part is also to be completed by March 2025, almost. So it is all well in time. All these things, stories are coming up that this is happening, that is happening. Uh, it's all not correct. And sure. uh, in fact, whatever is happening is correct, and that uh, we are following up and. Maybe some delay might be there on one part or another, but it's not because of any other reason. Sure, sir. Got it. Sir, uh, another thing is that uh, on particularly to the, to the various uh, capex which you have lined up for the H, uh, this, this, uh, the H expansion which you mentioned is about the JT, right? And the regular facilities which you need to set up. 
Yeah, in fact, this is the debottlenecking of the Hays plant to the extent of uh, uh, capacity expansion of 5 MTP from 17 and a half to 22 and a half. One part, jetty is another part which is going on separately. So that okay. capex also we are doing. It's in the tendering process. Hmm. We have yet to award that contract, so that is going on. So hmm. these are two different contracts: expansion and this uh, jetty, third jetty construction. Sure. Uh, so just one more question uh, on the outlook side. If you look at the, the domestic gas production has increased uh, in the last couple of months because of the reliance uh, started producing the gas from the MG field. And uh, the price of the, the international spot LNG is also lower, so there has been an incremental demand. Where do you see the demand for the country? And recently, the Gale in today's call was very optimistic that they may finish the year with an uh, 123 MMS PMD volume compared to the 115, 116 they have done the for this quarter. So, what is your outlook on the gas consumption and particularly for the, the, the your volume? Gas consumption level. Uh, I will request the marketing team to say it. See, oh. gas consumption level is now slowly increasing in the country. And you would see from our results itself, uh, the export market uh, has become quite affordable and uh, comparable to the long-term contract. And that is what the India has started setting up. And the trends are uh, expected to be in the similar line. And this year, we expect the volume to go up. Have I answered your question? Uh, partly, sir. Sir, uh, in case of, uh, let's uh, just want to go sir, another way. Uh, let's say uh, there has been uh, some decorpity which demands which you have asked for to the, to the your optics, right? GSPC torrent, uh, BPCL, and others. Uh, the gas demand and gas price substantially roll over this, this year, the spot LNG comes down. Uh, do we have the provision that they buy additional uh, cargoes, uh, bring additional cargoes, and that can be offset against the previous uh, year's demand? There is no such provision in the contract. Yeah. So as of now, there is nothing of that sort. Okay, got it. Thank you. One more, just I am supplementing what Mr. Uh, Sharma has just explained. The volume, if you look at last year, you are saying 120 mm MSMD, which is not correct. In fact, you see the uh, last year estimate consumption, it's 160 MMSCMD. And this month itself, uh, June end, it was 179 MMSCMD. So gas consumption is increasing, not decreasing. April, it has been 167 MMSCMD. That number which you spoke is was only for the gale, the gale transmission volume, which was 116 MMSCMD uh, for this quarter of Q1. And it was 108 MMSCMD for the, the previous quarter of Q4, FY23. So it was only for the gains and not uh, overall in gas consumption. Okay, okay, fine. Then it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the clarification. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vartharajan Sivasankaran from Antique Limited. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, so you were referring to the contract so you can complete the loop by giving us what are the other contracts and the remaining tenure of some of these contracts because the uh, long-term contracts we are aware of, uh, but uh, guys like uh, Torrent and uh, even GSPC for that matter, what is the remaining term of that contract and the quantum fee? See, if you are talking about regasification contracts with the customer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So if you look at the contracts uh, up to 2035 or 36 rather, so, if you look at the VGAS contract we have, it is total 8.25 MMTPA. Uh, if you look at the uh, division, it's a different uh, companies are there, mainly by Gale, IOCL, BPCL, GSPC, Torrent, and Adani. Yes. One for one year or two years maximum, Adani part. But other contracts are for uh, 2000, up to 2036. So that means uh, it's a long-term contract for regasification, and that is going, it will continue. It has been a difficult time to see the last year, whatever uh, prices have uh, gone to that extent, uh, exorbitant level. This is because of uh, various uh, unprecedented market uh, situations where uh, Russia-Ukraine war has happened, 
and then before that uh, there was the crisis also uh, covid and other things has uh, affected all these things so i think it will not continue forever so certainly the situation has started improving as you see the uh, lng prices in the market they have come down to almost 10 to 11 dollars so this is showing that prices have softened and perhaps this is the reason that our throughput has increased in this quarter you see the growth is uh, around 26% as compared to previous quarters so this is only because uh, more cargoes have come because prices have declined and uh, because of that the cargoes are coming to india so this is uh, uh, thing this is something which we hope will continue and maybe prices will further come down so more cargoes will come so sure. uh, specific to torrent and uh, uh, adani so we were under the impression the uh, remaining term is like one Yes. Uh, is it correct or is it sorry to interrupt but uh, the line for you is not very clear you sound very muffled i request you to please repeat the question and use the handset while you're speaking sir yeah is this better but this is much better sir please go ahead yes sir, sorry about that so specific to torrent and uh, adani uh, we were under the impression the remaining term is like more like one and a half and two years uh, so uh, is that correct or is it also long term Ladies and gentlemen the line for the management seems to have disconnected please stay with us while we reconnect with the management Ladies and gentlemen we thank you for your patience. Uh Vartarajan we request you to please uh, repeat your question for the management we've connected with the management. Yeah uh, sorry about that sir. Yeah. Just wanted to check specific to Torrent and Adani we were under the impression this was more like uh, relatively short term contracts with remaining terms of around 1 or 2 years. So uh, is that correct or are they also long term contracts? No no I am telling you I'm, you are partially correct. Adani contract is uh, for maximum one or two years. You are right, but Torrent is uh, up to 2036 for one MTP. Then Adani right. is 0.75 MTP. Sure. Uh, my second question was about this uh, East Coast uh, terminal. The FSRE market seems to be extremely tight at this point in time. Uh, are you still going ahead with the FSRE proposal, or uh, do you see like you know there is a reason to change that? Uh, uh we on that uh so we have lost the line for the management once again please stay on the line we'll reconnect with the management
Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for your patience. We have reconnected with the management. You may go ahead, sir. Yeah, I was repeating my question, sir. Uh, East Coast Terminal, the FSRE market seems to be extremely tight. So are you having a rethink on the proposal or uh, would you like to still go ahead with the FSRE-based uh, terminal on the East Coast? Yeah, East Coast Terminal will continue. We are firm on that. And uh, right now we are proposing only for FSRE-based terminal. Sure. So it will continue, but demand will continue. You see, India is a country where demand potential is very high. You cannot say the demand is not there. No, fair, fair enough, sir. Yeah, I was just wondering because FSRE market is so tight. Are you really would you be in a position to convert it into a, a land-based terminal? Oh, right. right. Yeah, absolutely. We are trying to explore it. If we are able to do it, uh, FSRE-based terminal, then it's fine. Otherwise, we'll go for land-based terminal. So both the options are op open there. Would there be a big difference in the CapEx cost in terms of your estimate? CapEx cost is uh, different, no doubt. It's uh, hardly 2,300 crores, FSRU, and that is uh, almost uh, 5,000 crores. So there's a CapEx difference, but then OPEX will be less in FSRU. Uh, so in a period of five, six years, it will be almost the same, both the FSRU as well as land -based. So that's sure. not an issue, but we have to see the feasibility because you are right. This market for FSRU is very tight because of European shifting to LNG and they have taken many FSRU. So maybe that we may not get a reasonably priced FSRU. Then we will certainly have a backup plan for land-based terminal. Sure, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of S. Ramesh from Nirmal Bang Equities. Please go ahead. Hello, thank you and good evening. Um, your yeah, other expenses has uh, almost doubled from the uh, first quarter last year. So can you explain why that has happened? And second, if you can give us the uh, regards margins and the uh, trading and inventory letter adjustments. Yeah, Mr. Ramesh, the other expenses uh, this time in, uh, is in line with the uh, last quarter. What are the numbers you are referring to? So if you look at uh, first quarter of uh, last year, yeah. Uh, it is 253 crores, and this year is 123 crores. So there's a sharp difference. It's all, it's yeah, down more than... Uh, yeah, the corresponding quarter, there was a forex loss of 124 crores. So if you take that out, then the other expenses are in line. Okay. And this quarter, there is a forex gain of about 4 crores. So that okay. is not coming here. Okay. So this this quarter is... Four. And what about the uh, regas and inventory and trading-related adjustments? Uh, 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 see, this, uh, since uh, we had told you in the past that once the prices stabilize and the throughput uh, start increasing, the trading will definitely be, uh, be also stop at certain level. So this time around, the trading gains are about 13 crores and uh, the inventory gains are about 15 crores. And what about regas margin? The regas margins are the same. I mean, uh, the, the, the throughput, if you see, it is 230 TVTs. And uh, the Dahej terminal has bounced back again at 96% utilization. So that's what we had told, that uh, once the prices stabilize, in any case, the throughput will come in. We, don't need, we, would, we might not need the uh, trading margins and the uh, inventory valuation gains, that was there during, during the times of distress when the uh, throughput was lower and the price was volatile. I understand. You usually give us a regas gross margin out of the gross contribution. You give us that figure for the regas uh, gross contribution. Okay. So, regas uh, contribution this time is uh, 717 crores. 717 crores. Yeah, the tolling so, contribution. So, okay. So, if you, if you were to look at the full year, like last year, you had some adjustments on the takeover pay. So this year, if you look at the next four quarters, <coughs> if you look at the overall gross contribution, are we expecting um, normalized uh, tariff uh, uh, receipts and we don't expect any user pay tariff because since you're already at normal volumes? Yeah, as of now, it looks like that. Okay, thank you very much. I'll get back in the chat. Yeah, thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanat Kumar from Value Research. Please go ahead. Can you hear me clearly? Uh, sir, the volume is very low for you, sir. 
Can you hear me clearly now? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Please, go ahead. Yeah, thank you for uh, providing this opportunity uh, to ask the question. Uh, I have two small questions. One is related to the fact that what percentage of price, LNG price increase, basically, uh, you know, we can pass through to the customers. And the second question is related to the regasification tariff. So, uh, ballpark figure, average figure for regasification tariff. You are talking about long-term contract, uh, then the price is whatever we get from suppliers, that is the entire cost is passed through, including exchange rate variation, everything. Okay, so, so everything is passed there through. Is no, there is nothing which, uh, no risk at all, which we are undertaking. So that one part is there. And you are, next question is the regas eviction tariff. Yeah, yeah. Average regas eviction tariff. Ladies and gentlemen, the line for the management seems to have disconnected. Please stay with us while we reconnect with the management. Okay, no problem. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for your patience. We have reconnected with the management. You may proceed, sir. Uh, Sanat? Yeah, so my question yeah, was please, regarding the... One moment, one moment, sir. I'm sorry, but the line has disconnected again. Please stand up. Oh, my God. No problem, no problem. Please. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for your patience. Uh, we have reconnected with the management. Uh, Sanat, you may proceed with your question, sir. Okay. So the question is related to the regasification tariff, the regas tariff, that average regas tariff that you charge. So as regas tariff is there, we are, you are wanting to know the rate or entire amount? During this not, not, the, not, not, not the amount. Uh, U.S. dollar per MMBTU average Regas tariff. So we are charging 59.50 pounds per kilo. 59, 59 point. And coaching, and coaching around 85 rupees. 
so kochi is 85 rupees and uh, the head is param bt on the head is around 59 rupees okay param bt you were uh, sorry rupees per mm bt rupees actually rupees okay and uh, another question which is related to lng prices so given the additional capacities that are coming up internationally on the on the production side the lng production side uh, do you think lng prices you know by the end of this year uh, will further go down by 50% or and um, on an average so i'm not talking looking at an exact number but just a ballpark figure as to how much do you think they may go down we cannot predict the lng market you know it's very difficult thing so many people predicted last year also but all predictions have gone wrong but as of now it doesn't look as if prices will increase but they are likely to remain stable at this 10 to 12 dollars so i cannot predict it will go down 50% again so this i don't have any data but one thing i can assure you that maybe in after 2026 27 when more uh, energy liquefaction capacities are coming maybe it to the extent of 150 mm cpa and even more so there is likelihood that price, this uh, energy prices will decline after that but in this market when the demand supply uh, dynamics are changing day to day i don't know what will happen but as of now in the near term in 2 3 months 4 months look like it will be in the range of 10 to 12 dollars okay so that's what i'm looking at so i'm not looking at a great number obviously nobody can yeah, predict so <laughs> roughly it remains stable or may go down by some number likely to be stable yeah okay okay thank you so much thank you so much thank you thank you the next question is from the line of niharika from equitas investment please go ahead uh, hi thank you for the opportunity uh, can you just uh, brief me on the double volumes which we have booked this quarter gil dabol we don't deal you ask this question from gil see her at the age no so because they stop it and kind of we book for the monsoons right we get their volumes we no, look at a split like that there is a split the only thing that uh, in uh, this also season they divert the cargo from dabol to the age of any other place so that is happening but uh, we don't have any data that how much they have diverted uh, but definitely they have done because their terminal is closed for the next 6 uh, month almost till this uh, september month september yeah uh, and my other question would be uh, government is very aggressive for this connection of north east grid to like gas grid so do we have any workout data that what kind of potential volume can come from north eastern part because uh, they are very gung ho on it and the work is going very fast to connect the whole north east yeah.
volatility cannot be ruled out at any moment of time but uh, one thing i can say is that looking at the international situation uh, even russia ukraine war has become almost uh, an accept- accepted thing across the globe and people have taken it as usual after discounting that also prices are stable and uh, because uh, european countries or have enough uh, inventory so uh, they are also not uh, doing any panic buying and that is that is a solace to us also that they are not doing it because they have storage of almost 84% of inventory so that is good enough to cater to the winter season which will be there in the month of october december and january february so that way it looks like that uh, prices are likely to remain stable at 10 to 12 dollars which is going right now so this is a good thing for us because we have seen that our terminal has also got uh, uh further volume because of this uh, stable prices of 10 to 12 dollars so we hope that it will continue thank you We have the next question from the line of Yogesh Patel from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my question, sir. I have two questions. If possible, can you provide a volume breakup at a dive terminal in terms of a long term spot and tolling? Yeah, the volume breakup uh, at dive terminal long long term is 90 TBT. For short term is 4 TBT, and uh, tolling is 123 TBT. Okay. Second question, as you indicated in earlier call about the timeline of extension of a Qatar Airlines contract beyond 2028, you indicated you will finalize the decision before the end of 2023. What is the update on that side, sir? Yes, yes, we are very much on time, and we are already engaged with the Qatar Energy for the for the discussion on this subject, and uh, that is uh, before December 23. We should finalize it. so are you near to near to extend this uh, uh, contract uh, uh, finalization stage is very near can we can we expect this time it thing cannot be uh, it is very near how far it is but it is going on and target is very clear before december 2023 we will finalize and uh, sign this contract oh okay, okay. so next one considering the upcoming huge lng export capacity addition in the next 3 to 4 years are you planning to enter into separate lng purchase contract with the global majors uh we are definitely exploring all the possibility so uh, we have some volume source so some volume from international market also but at the same time we are cautious because we can see the market it has been tight and it's a tight market you will not get the right price so this is one of the deterrent which is there and uh, that's why we are very cautious because nowadays if you see the contract they are at a very high flow in the international market so uh, because the availability is uh, demand supply is back to neck and uh, That's why the suppliers are now looking forward to have some higher scope for the LNG pricing. So that way we are very cautious. So we will definitely look for it, but at a right price. So that is always going on. And but current uh, concern is only this uh, extension of our gas contract, which we hope will be done by the year. Okay, and last one from my side, sir. In the next two to three years, our regas capacity will touch 22.5 mL TPA. Any update on new new capacity tie-up with the off-takers for the long term? Expansion, we are we are looking forward. We are open and we are in talks with the off-takers that they should book some more capacity in our tender because we are putting up this tender. So. Are you uh, So, are you in discussion with any off-taker? We are off-taker. discussing, but we cannot discuss all those things which we are we are not finalized. We are in discussion. And certainly, this is open to others also who want to book the capacity in terms. Uh, certainly, this will happen, but uh, uh, this is going on and uh, it's a process. Maybe we will find customers very soon. Okay. 
and lastly sir if possible can you share what is the uh, june sorry july 23 uh, uh, utilization rates for the dahej if possible uh right now we cannot uh, discuss all those things next quarter we will discuss july as well september september all three months right now we cannot discuss it's all taken together we take it so is it higher than 96% what it reported in the quarter first for 24 or is it a lower can you can you indicate something uh you guess actually we will not be able to discuss it you might take the ppc data and uh, look at it okay thanks thanks a lot sir thank you Ladies and gentlemen, to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants, we request you to please restrict your questions to one per participant. The next question is from the line of Darshan Gandhi, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, yes, you are audible, sir. You may proceed with your question. Yeah. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Just wanted to ask the management with respect to the dividend policy because uh, last two years I have been observing the total dividend outflow was 11.5 rupees per share, but uh, this year the cumulative outflow is 10. So is there any change in the dividend policy, or is the management looking for some other growth opportunities uh, on account of which the dividend is being reduced? No, this is not the case. Uh, 100, 115 percent is fine because. Uh, it's a good dividend if we are giving 100% to the paid up capital so uh, it should not be uh, conceived as that this uh, should not be seen as if we are trying to reduce the dividend uh, to the shareholder there is no change in the policy it is very much there and we will try to continue to pay at least 100% dividend on the paid up capital in future as well So this is our endeavor, and there is no change in the policy. Okay, okay, fair enough, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Meg Shah from Prospero Tree. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Am I audible? Uh, yes, you are audible. Please go ahead. Sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, can you uh, give the breakup of the trade receivable? uh like the uh, uh the pending user pay charges like uh which party is uh pending like what amount uh you are asking about the user pay charges only right yeah yeah user pay charges yeah for uh, uh contract year 2022 yeah. uh gspc 285 crores okay the total is 843 crores basically we are yeah. spending You need the breakup, right? For, for or you yeah. need only the yearly figure. No, no. For the uh, calendar year twenty two, each party breakup. Yeah, it's GSPC two eighty five crores, GPCL twenty six crores, uh, Torrent Power Limited one hundred seventy nine crores, IOCL two hundred twenty seven crores. And ATPL uh, that uh, Danny total uh, 125. Okay, so basically uh, the uh, promoters are supposed to pay to the company itself, right? Uh, like most of the user pay charges, like uh, the IOCL and uh, are all promoters as well, and they are the clients as well, customers as well. So uh, why are like why are the promoters not paying uh, to the company itself? Like if we see. the funds are pending from calendar year 20 21 22 so 3 years and we are in calendar year 20 23 so 3 from 3 years the funds are pending so it's very like it uh, it gives a very negative signal to other customers and to the market general generally so no, no, it's not like this uh, you are wrongly saying that it is pending for the 3 years If you look at the use of pay charges for calendar year 2021, it is charged only in the month of January 2022. Means for the entire calendar year, the first time we charge it in 22. So if you see, it is only one and half year. And if you look at this 2022 calendar year, they have been booked in January 2023. So like that, it is going on. So hardly four, five months, six months. Delay is there, but we are definitely on 
discussion with them and this is going on it's a process and we will try to recover as early as possible but only thing that there has been some difficult situation in the past which nobody can rule out but uh, still we are hopeful because as per contract these are payable so this should be paid by them so it is only one and a half years since first time they have um they were booked uh, this use of a charges okay got it uh, any uh, expected timeline till when the funds will be refused see we expect it as early as possible within this financial year at least we expect it in this financial year so uh, what are the chances that they will be received in this financial year uh, itself if you give uh, if you can chances uh, nobody can predict so only by see i cannot predict it when i will get it because uh, it is a discussion it's a mutual discussion going on so once this is settled it will be known to you and there is no time like as such that when it will be received thank you the next question is from the line of s ramesh from nirmal bang equities please go ahead Yeah, thank you very much for the follow up so in kochi last year with the uh, high gas prices was uh, reducing the uptake from your anchor customers now uh, with the prices coming down do you see any increase in the consumption in the uh, lng for, from your kochi terminal uh, and uh, what is restricting the increase in the utilization there because the volume is flat so you can give us some sense in terms of <clears throat> what is the kind of uh, demand you are seeing for gas for kochi terminal now you see it uh, increasing uh, uh, once uh, the uh, kochi bangalore mangalore pipeline is ready yeah one first question is regarding this utilization of your kochi terminal uh, because uh, last year as you very well know that some customers uh, stop taking the gas because it is very costly but now uh, they are returning to utilization of the gas and perhaps we hope in next 5 uh, 6 months uh, they will start taking in full volume and uh, another part you have asked is uh, regarding connectivity from kochi to bangalore yeah so that is going on and uh, we have been given assurance by uh, cmd gain that it will be completed by november 2024 so then uh, there will be uh, utilization of uh, terminal because uh, many industrial uh, pockets will be there between kochi uh, bangalore like coimbatore salem they will be having some demand and apart from that uh, all cgd uh, business uh, pipelines are being laid and cgd entities are coming up in that area so perhaps that will further uh, enhance the consumption level of kochi uh, terminal so this is how it is taking shape and uh, we hope that for the uh, softening of prices of natural gas for the promote the usage of our kochi tender so if i can squeeze in one more thought what is the latest thinking on biogas and lng in uh, heavy truck segment any progress on that so about that part i think uh, we are already constructing four terminal lng dispensing station and uh, that are ready and uh, i hope that uh, very shortly they will be uh, starting but only thing is that because of high lng prices in the recent past uh, this progress was a little bit delayed uh, but now prices are coming down so we hope that uh, this segment will further uh, uh, take place and uh, perhaps more and more people will come in this segment more conversion will happen because we have started uh, constructing four uh, energy dispensing station in southern india and they are almost completed the only thing we need is the petro approvals and other formalities are to be completed and with one of the ones we have installed these four stations so let us see uh, how people take it because we have to experiment it first there and if it is found useful then perhaps it will be replicated at, at other places also and we will install more energy station and further oil marketing companies are also doing same thing they are also installing some stations 
So I think uh, this is how it is going ahead. But uh, of course, because of energy prices in the past five years, uh, this segment uh, was not going as fast as it should have gone. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, operator, can we uh, close the call? Uh, yes, sir. We can uh, go ahead. We have one last question in queue, sir. Would okay. you like to take that or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please yes. continue. Yes. Uh, the next question is from the line of uh, Sabri Hazarika from MK Global Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sir. Uh, we're just ending the call only. So I think uh, um, uh, thank you so much uh, for this for the call and the insights uh, on the results and congratulations on a uh, good set of numbers uh, for the quarter. Uh, sir, I just uh, have this bookkeeping question regarding, um, I think, uh, the index uh, numbers and also uh, the Gorgon volumes in the H. Uh, so can you please uh, give me that and then we'll end it, yeah. Yeah, so Sabri, the Gorgon volumes at the H uh, is 4.5 TBT. 4.5, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and what would be the in days numbers uh, for the for the uh, quarter in terms of gross yeah, profit? It's uh, one fifty nine positive. Yeah. One fifty nine gross positive at gross margin level. Yeah. Then forex gain of four crores. Uh, forex gain of four crores. Okay. Four crores and eight crores positive at other expenses level. Okay. And depreciation yeah. interest. Then depreciation eighty three crores and interest seventy uh, one. Uh, seventy one. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, and uh, and all the best. Uh, Thank you. On behalf of MD. Thank you, Sabri. Without your question, this conference was not complete. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You no. uh, rightly asked the question. <laughs> now it is complete. Uh, no, no, sir. I think uh, better questions to ask uh, before. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. So, any closing comments, Thank sir? You. Yeah. Then we can end it. Yeah. yeah the closing comments is as uh, what we are doing now. You seen that uh, we have done well this quarter. And uh, we hope that this uh, second quarter will also be very good because, as you know, that uh, whatever we are doing, we are doing our best to enhance the utilization level of our tender. But it is further supported by the uh, declining energy prices. So we hope that if these prices will continue, we certainly will again raise the level in second quarter and will show good results in second quarter also. So this is how quarter on quarter we are taking up this uh, business. We don't predict for the entire year. We take first quarters and second quarters like that. We are doing all the efforts how to enhance the profitability. So your trust, shareholders trust in us. That is, that is very primary and uh, we make all efforts to increase the profitability of the company as far as possible. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of MK.